What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Got another boat video coming at you. You can see been doing a little cleaning, polishing on it. Um, just cleaning it up a little bit from all the scum from last year and then rattle canned the trailer. All the little rock chips got all that touched up so everything's looking good but the main purpose of today's video is we're going to do a little bit of trailer maintenance. Um, I'm pretty sure these pieces were all original and what I'm talking about are the two guides. There's a guide on each side and then the inner fender well. And I'm pretty sure they were still original from 1992. But So I've got carpet cut. Um, I cut two pieces for the slides as I call them or guides and then two pieces for the inner fender wells. And for the inner fender wells, I'm using just the 5 8 plywood that I used, had left over from the decks. And then for the slides, they are just made out of a 2x4. But you can see this is the original inner fender well. And it was just like, oh, either quarter or 3 8 plywood. But I've already made sure uh, the new pieces do fit in there. And you can see here's the slides. So I did a little bit of modification over what they did um, from the factory. So mine, I've routed all the edges so there's no sharp corners. So it'll be nice when you're coming in with the boat. Should bounce right off of this, shouldn't do any damage to the hull. And then the bottom inside or bottom outside corner, I guess it is, um, will still be uh, the sharp corner that comes on the lumber so yeah all we've got to do is get these wrapped in carpet so I've got my stapler again with the stainless steel staples and let's get after it I'm gonna get these two slides all stapled up and then we'll start working on the inner fender wells All right, we got both slides done. They're all wrapped up in carpet all the way around. The only thing left we have to do is to mount them on the trailer and we'll have to drill pilot holes when we go to do that. But now let's start working on the inner fender wells. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this all stapled up and then I'll do the other one and we'll pick you guys back up once I get those done. All right, just wrapped up that first inner fender well. Turned out really good. Should last another 25, 30 years, just like the first one did. And then we've got one more to go, but I am just about out of staples and my wife wants to go to dinner. So I'm gonna have to wrap it up for today, but I'll be back. I'll pick you guys up again tomorrow. Hopefully finish this all up. And then I want to do some investigation on the axle. It was a brand new axle two years ago and I haven't touched it since I installed it, assembled everything. So 
I jack it up, make sure the bearings are still tight, throw some grease in them, because we do have a little bit of a long trip coming up. So, yeah, pick you guys up again tomorrow. See you then. Welcome back. It's the next day. We've got all the pieces done as you guys saw. So now let's go ahead and get our trailer slides mounted up. I've got the screws ready to go and all we got to do is get a drill bit and pre-drill the holes. And we should be good to go. So let's get them thrown back on. So I'm just going to make them flush to the rear of the trailer back here and put the screws kind of in the center of the 2x4. So right there it looks pretty close for the front. Get our first screw thrown in. center up the rear and do the same. So there's the finished product. They turned out real slick. And then we grab one of these inner fender wells. And the carpeted side goes in towards the boat. So when the boat's not on the trailer, you can see that. But basically they just tuck right in here. They fit real snug. And they get screwed from the inside so with the boat on the trailer we're not going to be able to do that so the next time I dump it in um, I'll just screw those on quick after I pull the trailer out but yeah they turned out pretty slick um, gonna try and probably dump the boat in quick to do those before I go on the long trip just to keep any road debris from kicking up from those trailer tires but yeah she looks good boat looks good now the trailer looks good and i've already redone all the trailer lighting when i first got the boat put in led side markers and all led tail lights rewired the whole thing so the trailer's pretty much as good as new now and then anytime i get rock chips just keep hitting it with some spray paint but all i've got to do is uh, throw that slider on the opposite side and we'll be good to go, but I'm probably going to do that quick, and then I'll pick you guys up because I want to do some other trailer maintenance uh, before this long trip, so see you in a second. All right, so to check and grease the bearings on your trailer, all you've got to do is jack it up one side at a time, and to check them, you, it really takes two hands, but you got to pull on the tire um, and kind of shake it and see if you can feel any movement. See if you guys can hear this. So there's a little tiny bit of movement in there, so I am gonna tighten that one up, snug it up just a little bit. So we'll start by popping that cap off. All right, I'm gonna try my best to do this and be able to show you guys. But the easiest way I've found to pull this cap off is to take a screwdriver, stick it behind that little groove and then with a wrench, 
turn the cap. Maybe it's going to take a little bit of hammer action to tap it in there first. There she comes. And just work it around until you get her popped right off. Now the cap's off, you can see this is a new axle, this is not the original axle that came with the trailer, so it's a, a through grease axle, but you can see that just a little bit of play in the bearings. So now, to loosen that all up, we gotta take this cutter pin out. So now we've got the pin out, we can grab onto this castle nut and turn it until it goes tight. So right there she's snug and then I'm going to back it off about two notches so I can get that cotter pin back in. And you want to make sure there's not resistance. Feels good. And we'll slide the cotter pin back in that hole, same hole. <clears throat> then just bend it back up. To lock it in place. And that's it. And if you don't have the axle with the grease zerk uh, to grease the bearings, I would say every few years you're going to want to pull these, pull the hub apart and repack the bearings if you're doing a lot of trailering. But that's what makes this axle really nice. So we're gonna shoot it up with grease. Right there, she's just starting to push back. job is kind of a greasy mess. I'm just going to clean off my zerk and put our cap back on. She's good to go for a few years. You want to check them every year but you shouldn't have to do much maintenance to them. That's a wrap. So the last thing I'm going to do is change the fluid on the lower unit quick. It's a real simple job so I'll show you how you guys how to do that quick. Okay again I'll try and do my best here. But this is a Johnson Evinrude uh, 40 horse two stroke. So we've got the upper breather up here and then the lower drain down there. So my breather is still the regular flat head and then I changed out the lower one to an Allen head because I was having trouble with it being stripped out. So let's go ahead and pop this lower one loose. And 
and then we will loosen up the upper one to let some air in. Let her drain. You can see she's kind of milky, so it probably did have a little bit of water in there. So I'll let that drain and then pick you guys back up. Okay, I've let it sit for 15 minutes or so, so she's basically drained out. And you do want to make sure that you have it level with the ground, because that drain hole is at the very bottom when it's all level. So, And now to fill it up, all you do is you plug into that drain hole. <clears throat> so you, it's a lot easier um, with one of these pumpers with a threaded end. And I'm just going to run some Lucas differential fluid, but basically we just thread into that drain. Until it's tight. So we're tight right there. And now we're just gonna fill it up until it starts sweeping out of that top breather hole. All right, that one I just had left over from before. So we'll grab a fresh one and continue filling. So there you go. So now to get the rest of it out, you want to put your breather screw back in first. And that cuts off the air to that cavity. that in, get it tight, and then I'm going to queue up my drain plug. This is a magnetic plug. There's a couple shavings on there, not bad. Get those off. Okay. And then basically just have that ready to go back in right away. Because as soon as I take this hose off, it's going to start dripping. It's not going to pour out, but it's going to drip a little bit. So I'm going to get this back in as quick as you can. Just like that. That's basically all there is to it. And there's a lot of reasons why you could get some water up in the lower unit. In mine, I've kind of watched it as it's been coming out. I would say there's probably a teaspoon in there, maybe. Here, I'll show you guys. So you can see down in the oil pan. It actually looks worse on camera than it does in person. But yeah, there's maybe a teaspoon of water in there and there's several reasons for that but one of them that I see a lot on this engine is if I get into some fishing line um, fishing line will go up under that seal intermittently and let a little bit of water in so you want to check um, around your prop quite frequently to make sure that you're not wrapped up in fish fishing line and actually when I bought this boat I bet you there was 300 yards of fishing line wrapped around that prop so but yeah it's pretty simple only thing left to do is just clean up wipe it down get all the oil off but got quite a bit done today got our slides on the back of the trailer did the bearings hubs greased them and then we also got our inner fender wells all done and ready to go so all we got to do is dump it in pull the trailer out and screw those on so but thanks guys for watching <clears throat> there's still i still have 
plans for doing several more boat videos so if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and I'm gonna maybe try and do a couple of fishing videos I've tried to film a few in the past um, didn't have great success um, just with the video portion of it it's kind of difficult but we got a week-long trip coming so I might try and film a couple of days of that we'll see how it goes but yeah so far so good uh, the boat's been running awesome all the new features I love them so if you guys got any questions or you want to see anything else, uh, drop a comment below. But otherwise, we'll catch you guys on the next one.